All right, what's up guys? So we've seen these in our video many times, cut out doors and the fuse link that goes inside when they blow. It's in like probably 75 of my videos, but never have we taken a look at bayonet fuses inside pad mount transformers. So we're gonna go over how to test to see if it's a bad fuse as well as how to remove them and how to change that fuse. And today we've got with us Miguel, that's gonna be helping us out. So, a few things it's extremely important to remember. This is the location of the bayonet fuse inside here. That fuse, if that's pulled, does not shut off the power to the primary bushings. The fuse point inside this pad mount is between the primary and the secondary side. So if you have voltage, you confirm that there is voltage in your primary and you have no voltage on your secondary, there very well could be a bad bayonet fuse. So lots of these units do have covers that lift up. Some nice little shocks in the corner there. And you do want to use your hot stick to remove these fuses, of course. The first step is lead off any air pressure. These things heat up. There can be quite a bit of pressure that builds up inside this tank. You pop open that fuse and you might have oil in your face. So you do want to stand off to the side with your hot stick and this connection, we've seen this in videos before, you simply roll that out and you slowly remove the fuse. You do it slowly so you don't end up spilling oil all over the place. You can see there's a little pad there where the oil drips out. So we're just going to remove that slowly. That brass part is the actual fuse portion of the bayonet. You also want to be extremely careful not to get any dirt inside that oil in the tank. So first thing we're going to do, let's wipe all the oil off this fella here. We could probably set that down right on top of this box. And we're going to use a simple multimeter. I'll give that to Miguel to test for continuity in that fuse. So the fuse connects to either brass end. Once you put that inside, there's, there's an air gap on the primary connections and the primary actually travels through that fuse. So to see if that fuse is blown, we're gonna set it on our ohm setting and check for continuity. So this fuse in this case is good. It's a brand new unit, of course. However, if you don't get that beep, very good chance that fuse is blown. So these guys are on pretty tight that's why there's some little slots in there so you can use some crescent wrenches to get this guy off we've already loosened it up so we'll get Miguel here to unscrew that bayonet fuse you don't want to set these guys on the ground either and get grit all in the oil it's still kind of damp from oil there you might need two wrenches for this process but again we didn't tighten it up too much here so you're going to want to remove that cap so we can see on the cap here the tip is kind of tapered we'll get into why that is in a minute but as it actually seats the fuse it spreads those ears to make a good connection against the brass so if this is blown a little bit easier to remove but we're just going to take this small screwdriver and Pop that guy out. This is what the bayonet fuse looks like, and it is stamped directly on the fuse, the fuse size, 100 amp. So we've already messed around with that. We're not gonna put the same fuse back in. We have a Cooper Power Systems 100 amp fuse. There's 7,200 volts going through this guy. So we'll get that guy opened up. So this is what a new fuse looks like. You can see the end is perfectly straight as opposed to being kind of mushroomed there. So you want to make sure if you look at this end, it's a little bit fatter than this end. So we're going to drop that fuse in through this end here. Uh, you don't have to flatten those. So all you, what you want to do now, you want to screw this part on first. 
And the reason you're gonna screw this on before you seat it is to hold that fuse tight in against the brass so that as you're pushing that down, it's not gonna force the fuse back out. So we will use a wrench and tighten that guy up a little bit. Okay, once he's all the way tight, now, as you screw that cap in, it's gonna start spreading open those tabs. You wanna make sure it doesn't spread them inward. So just start going by hand a little bit. Now we're gonna back it off and check inside to make sure that it is seating properly. So we can see those tabs all mushroomed outward so they are seating properly. So let's put that cap back in and Give it a good snug with our crescent wrench. Perfect. So our next step using our hot stick, of course, you wanna drop it in. Now when you're reinstalling these fuses, you wanna slide them in slowly against the old doesn't squirt out and stop about three quarters halfway to three quarters now this last little bit with your hot stick you want to give it a good firm almost like a slam shut so there we go roll that shut as soon as that locks in you're going to hear this thing come alive and check for voltage on your secondary side voltage should be there very good chance you might have a couple of those fuses blown maybe just one either way you do want to remove all three when doing this process so that's pretty much it for today, guys. Big thanks to Miguel for helping us out. We'll have lots of stuff coming up soon. Thanks for watching. As always, be safe, guys.